All right, hey everybody, this is Raleigh, and today we are talking about handstands. Handstands are a weight transfer that inverts and turns your body upside down and puts all the weight on your arms. So let's get right into it. If you notice the gray arrow at the top, it's just letting you know that there's a down force coming down on your entire body. The orange arrows are letting you know that there's these opposing forces on the body and, and how the um, joints need to actually open up to fight the opposing forces. So really what's happening is, I'm gonna just make a clear picture here. Um, let's make this blue. Okay, so really the blue arrows are actually uh, opposing the orange arrows and it's really every other one. So like if you take the arrow at the knees, the orange arrow at the knees, and you get to a blue arrow and those two are fighting each other in the direction they're opening. The knees are opening one way and the hips are opening the other. And then you go down and the ribs are opening, opposing the direction that the hips are opening. So when you put the knee arrows and the rib arrows together, those two are fighting the blue arrow. And then you can kind of move down. You go, okay, well, the blue arrow at the hips and the blue arrow at the shoulders are fighting against the orange arrow that is between it. And if you don't quite understand what I'm saying, so this arrow and this arrow, these two arrows are pushing against what this blue arrow is. And so it's pushing this way. So if you're ever to you know, take your fingers and put them on the end of something and then push in the middle, you have this opposing force going on. And so it's the same thing with this arrow and this arrow. They're fighting this one over here. And so it just builds its way through. These two arrows are fighting this point. These two arrows are fighting this point. And so by doing this, you're actually stacking everything so that um, you have these opposing forces and the body becomes one unit. It does not become multiple different units where you have knees flailing in the air and hips moving and ribs and everything its own thing. It, it makes your body one unit and that is the key to being able to then balance. So there are three different types of handstands. You have an arch, straight, hollow. The straight handstand is the one that you're really trying to balance. It's the one that you're trying to master. The arch and hollow are usually shapes that you pass through when you're doing skills, but um, they're also still necessary to learn and understand so that you know the difference so that you can find straight more easily. If you look at the picture of the arm with the dotted orange line, the weight of the body wants to go over the center of the hand. So it's just important to understand that your body needs to be, your center mass needs to be over the center of your hand, not more on the heel of the hand or on the fingertips. The blue arrow, the orange arrow are letting you know that there's these two forces going on. So the blue arrow is saying, hey, you need to fall towards the backside of your body. But the fingers, where the orange arrow is pushing down on the fingers, you need to apply down force with the fingers to stop the fall from happening, which creates this orange arrow fighting the fall. So the blue arrow and orange arrow are fighting each other because you're pushing down on the fingers because you're in a constant state of fall, but you're always fighting the fall. And that is how you are able to hold the static handstand. If you're falling to the stomach side, then you're going to have to put your body on the opposite side of the center of mass, which means you need to close your shoulders, bend your elbows, and lift your fingers up. You're trying to change your position and relationship to your center of mass so that you slow down the fall. And with falling, you have to be able to identify the fall almost before it happens so you can make the adjustment sooner. If you're falling to the backside, then you need to put your, your body on the opposite side of the center of mass, the direction that the center of mass is falling. Uh, usually this comes from pushing down on your fingertips. Okay, This one comes from picking up your fingertips. This is pushing down on your fingertips and it changes the body into an arched handstand and it helps you slow down the center of mass from falling. This is a lunge position and a lunge position has three uh, lines in it. So as you can see, the three lines. Uh, Lena, what's up? Lena? <clears throat> okay, so this is a lunge position. And usually the lunge is what you're entering and exiting out of a handstand with. You're going to see the lunge in cartwheels and round offs and other things. But basically it's just a shape, a position on how you want to be your starting position and how you want to get into a handstand and come out of a handstand. 
Um, the main thing I want you to know about a lunge position is there's three lines. So if you look from the wrist to the foot, it makes one line. From the hip to the knee, it makes another. And from the knee to the foot, it makes a third line. And this is called segmentation. And basically, the least amount of lines possible makes the, the um, body look more appeasing to the eye. And so if you have bent elbows or bent knees, you're going to have more lines and then it just doesn't look as well, but it's also not as supportive. The straight line, the longest one from the wrist to the foot is already setting the body up for the handstand. So it's really about engaging that long line and then bringing everything together. This is a lever. And so you can see that the three lines now have gone to two because the leg is straight. And then you would basically be levering into the handstand, placing the hands on the ground, picking one leg up to the handstand. So you're placing the hands down and then you're kicking up to the handstand. Um, again, the handstand shape you're trying to maintain through the lever. So all you have to do is bring one leg up and you're in the handstand shape. Uh, this will be a pike lever handstand. So this is a more technical way of getting inverted. It's not so much necessarily of how you should get into a handstand, but it is more the idea of how to invert quickly. So by leaving the leg down and dropping the torso, um, it allows you to kick the leg up and have assistance into the handstand. It's a good technique to learn in the sense of if you're trying to develop cartwheels and other things to get them to move their body. Um, it adds more force, more power, and it's a little bit more coordination. This is a jump to handstand. So if you're in a tuck stand and then you're to jump to handstand, you're going to have to unravel the body. So the hips are going to have to go over the shoulders and then the feet will open up. And this is more about timing on how you stack everything appropriately, because if you shoot open to handstand too early, you'll never make it vertically to handstand. This would be from a pike position. So again, you're going to have to push the shoulders over the hips and then pick the feet up. Oftentimes with these things, people try to pick their feet up too early. Their hips never stack. So this is all about stacking the shoulders over the hands, the hips over the shoulders, and then the feet over the hips and just doing it appropriately. The pressed handstand is in a straddle position. If you see where the hands are compared to the feet, the feet are up as high as possible, preferably shoulder height, and then you're pushing your hips in the air, holding that compression. The thing to know about a pressed handstand is right here in this area um, where the hips are and the arms are and stuff. This needs to be as small as possible, as long as possible. So you're really trying to keep this area small. And you'll notice this because once the legs drop, this area will um, get bigger. Or if they try to push the hips out too soon, this area will get bigger. And so it's really looking at this to see if it can stay as small as possible, as long as possible. Press to handstand is a, is a skill that is a supplementary skill for just developing basically um, general strength. If you can do this, then you're pretty much strong enough for most skills in gymnastics on, on the women's side. So here's some handstand options. You should do a handstand shape lying on the floor so that you're actually getting in the correct position. Do a handstand on the wall. Next, just support yourself and build the, um, the volume and the time you need to be able to hold yourself. Static handstands on the floor, just off the wall. Um, most people, when they first start, they're only going to be do, able to do a couple seconds. So it's good to also transition into handstand walking because that actually creates more coordination than just static handstands. I found that if somebody learns to do handstand walking, they tend to be able to hold static handstand better. Thomas touches, they probably have a different name, is when you hold a handstand and you pick one arm and then you touch either your head, your shoulder, or your legs. You try to do as many as you can in a row. So is if you could imagine picking up one arm and trying to touch your leg, that's a lot of time that you're gonna be on one arm handstand. So um, you know, it just increases in difficulty. Head's easier, shoulders a little bit more difficult, and then legs the most difficult. Stall the press to handstand, again, is the most difficult way to get into a handstand, and that's really what you're trying to develop so that you create this general strength that can be crossed over to all levels and um, skills in gymnastics. So that's basically the handstand. There's a lot of subtle nuances, but in, in reality, a handstand is pretty simple. You just need to have volume and time in the correct shape. And uh, it's going to be on the coach to making sure that the students are entering and exiting a handstand appropriately and holding that standard really high because the, the expectation of holding a standard or holding a handstand really isn't that difficult. Most people can. So um, even if they have no experience, they may not be able to get to the correct shape, but they will be able to hold a handstand. What you will see oftentimes is because people cannot hold the correct shape in a handstand, you're going to over time 
be working on improving that shape. And so that's really something that you have to have the patience for and not be in a rush to try to achieve. So there you have it. handstands, weight transfers, all about getting inverted.